expensive because oftentimes we have very interesting outcomes who in the best case, in the ideal case, are translated into policies. And um, it's, as I said, it's a platform of exchange for government, for civil society, for academia, and for um, people uh, working in the private sector, uh, in this case, ecological owners. So what would be, what be the outcomes that you're um, looking for you know, in terms of after continuing this climate talks? So as I said, ideally it's policy, uh, policy outcomes, policy setting, but of course I think the main thing what we aim at is networking between the different actors and creating awareness. Yes. Matchmaking and creating awareness with our public events, with our presence on television for example, with uh, the journalists who attend our sessions and this is really important because it really starts in the minds of the people of course. awareness and, and actually Laura if you can tell us what do you think the kind of um, type of tourists that will actually prefer and come to um, eco lodges and, and, and to give up luxury for instance um, who, what, I mean is this sort of popular is it I mean coming up again or is it how how is it really taking place I can only speak out of my own experience. Mm -hmm. And as a German, for example, in, in my environment, I can see that many people are really into such kind of tourism. They mm -hmm. like the adventure, they like to do something which is not mainstream. Mm -hmm. And it's really something that that's a change of uh, minds is going on, especially mm -hmm. in Germany. And people are looking for alternative ways of spending their holidays. Um, and yeah, I think this is just the sort of really some kind of yes. yes. So I think it's mainly young people yeah. who, who look for something mm -hmm. before that kind of sort yes. of yes. So uh, back to you, Dr. Ahmed, one of you know uh, the great great spots in Egypt is definitely the Great Pyramids. And uh, speaking of green, there's a lot to be done, you know, around the pyramids. Um, that's that's a concern of. Uh, Let's, uh, let's uh, segregate the spectrum of tourism activities. You know, you have cultural tours, which people come in to visit monuments. Then you have uh, sun and sand or beach type tours. So now we're shifting more into people that are coming for a, a specific to visit a specific location. They're not coming to enjoy their time, so to speak. Of course, they enjoy looking at these monuments and visiting them. But the main focus really is to come and see these things. So the green in here starts taking a little bit of a different dimension. Is that you want to preserve these things and you want to maintain uh, their natural presence. So there's a lot to be done in that, in that file. We, we haven't touched it yet, but I intend to get into it heavily because we need to make sure that there's not enough pollution. There's not no pollution period around the pyramids area in terms of cars and vehicles moving around reducing that yeah, yeah, we really have to pay minds. a lot of attention to that and then we have to create some kind of a, 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 an environment of feeling that you are as a tourist not just as a host as a tourist you need to be responsible for this as well and you need to take pride that you're doing activities to preserve something because the fact that it exists in Egypt Yes, we own it, but the whole globe owns it. This is something that the entire 7 billion people population need to feel ownership of. Do you think, do you think today we, we, we stand in a position where uh, the Ministry of Tourism have the enough authority and empowerment, especially when it's like one of the most important you know, um, aspects or um, every generation challenge and goes down to foreign resources? So, uh, do you think the Ministry has enough empowerment and authority to get implement and enforce policies that what uh, Leo was speaking about? Uh, power? Uh, everybody has power. I think the, the, the issue starts with the vision. We do have the vision. I think there needs to be a change in how we look at things as government. The government role is to enable a market, is to enable activities to happen and then people find the right playing field to do it on. Then you gain power and force by the circumstances that you have. I think we have a very uh, good and golden opportunity right now because everybody is ready and open for change. Everybody considers that change is a must for Egypt to become better. So I think we take that as a force, as a, as a tailwind behind us to move forward. Now, do we 
have the power? No, we cooperate with other entities, with other stakeholders. We cooperate with the Ministry of Tourism, the uh, Ministry of, uh, of Antiquities. All of these people are stakeholders in what we do. We work with them, but then I think that the most powerful entity of the equation is the people themselves. And, um, Leila, if you can tell us a little bit about green tourism, maybe in Germany, your hometown. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm not an expert on green tourism, to be honest. Well, just um, but I, can, I can tell you that um, in general, I read about uh, a study by the German Traveling Association mm -hmm. saying that 61% of all Germans consider green or sustainability aspects in their travel choices. So there's really some awareness um, in the minds of the Germans. And I mean, we have different offers of, of green tourism in Germany as, as we have in Egypt. I mean, there are big hotels who have, we don't have the green star concept, but we have something similar um, that the hotels advertise with the fact that they are greener or more um, energy efficient, for example, than other hotels. We also have these small kind of lodges where you can go, for example, for yoga retreats or meditation where you get close to nature and we also have that where you don't have electric electricity and things like that. So all that exists in Germany as well. And, and people make use of that offer, of course. And, and how, how beneficial do you think would green tourism be in Egypt? I think it would be very beneficial because, as uh, Dr. Imad was saying, um, it's time for a change and it's time to to rethink or yeah, to rethink uh, the things of the past. And I think right now. As we all know, tourism went, went down, uh, tourists are a bit skeptic of going to Egypt, they have security concerns in mind. So um, in order to re-attract really these tourists, of course you, you need to offer the standard package of these, all these tourists wanting to go to the Red Sea to spend their holidays there. But I think it would be nice to also offer something different and to really advertise what you have because often yeah. people don't know about the like, enormous wealth of natural people Egypt is offering, and in order to to advertise that and to make like really connect people with the wealth of nature, Egypt has. I think ecotourism is really a niche in mean, Egypt. Should be there, and that's actually as you're saying, if people really advertise properly, Dr. Like Medo we have 66 hotels, um, and that's quite a number. And I don't think a lot of our viewers know about this. But, and I, I think also what I share the, the same thinking. I think it, it's high time that you need to expose the value that's inherent in our cultural wealth and our tourism wealth. We are one unique country in the world that has multiple types of tourism. A lot of people don't have. We have tourism in the desert, we have on the beach, on the Nile, we have culture, we have everything. We have everything. And, and yesterday, was, was, at the discussion, there was a little video about uh, ecologies. And we could see these things that probably very few in the world that have this type of indigenous building that reflects the old culture. People think this is an experience. That's what tourism is all about. It's not sitting in the sun soaking. You can be in Greece or in Egypt sitting in the sun, but you can only be in Egypt to go and see the like, right desert or see one. So we have to be a little bit more focused on the value of what the tourist needs to get. It is not about $50 a night or $100 a night. It's, I'm giving you so many ideas that yeah. nobody else has. And this is why you need to come and see. It's a pretty good, it's a valid proposition that you're trying to present to uh, the world. The other dimension of it is that we, we need to think of it as a life style, not a project. Green tourism is not a project. We always call it green tourism equals a journey to sustainability. We need to, to make a trip to sustainability. It doesn't end. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a change of mindset, and, and we are basically determined to make that change, and we resort to our friends in the German camp to help us out in, in realizing this dream. It's uh, interesting, and uh, I would like to thank you very much, Leo Excel, the head of science department in the German, uh, German's uh, embassy, and also Dr. Amal Hassan.